So here we're going to introduce you to WordPress. We'll describe what it is, how it works, and why you might want to use it. Then we'll look at how to install it and make it more secure. It's pretty hard to describe a system as flexible as WordPress in a succinct way. So let's borrow from its creators. This is how they describe it. Now while that's accurate, it's perhaps not that useful for us. So let's break it down a bit and see why each of these points matters. Firstly, it's easy to use. However different WordPress sites may appear, behind the scenes they're based on the same intuitive WordPress dashboard, designed for ease of use by non-technical users according to the WordPress philosophy, whether that's creating posts, uploading media, or doing anything else within the system. WordPress is also extensible through plugins. While the core software is built to be lean and do just what it needs to do, users have the choice of what extra functionality they want to add through plugins. For every bit of functionality you want, you'll find one or maybe many plugins that will do the job, and these are simple to add and activate in your site. You can also restyle your site simply by applying a new theme. There are tens of thousands of them out there ready to use, and thanks to the open source model, they're free, can be changed, or you can even build your own unique theme relatively easily. WordPress isn't just a blog anymore. While it may have started out that way, it's matured into a platform for publishing. It's still widely used as a blog, but also as a content management system for websites, both large and small, as a social network, as a learning management system, e-portfolio, and many end of the uses. It's a very flexible system. So here we see an example of a customised WordPress install with a custom login page, a custom dashboard, and also with custom post types, in this case a workshop for the NetSkills content management system. The key thing is that the front end can look very different while the back end remains intuitive and easy to use. The key factor for many in adopting WordPress is the community of developers, designers and users that make WordPress, create plugins, design themes, write tutorials and run events to make using the system as easy as possible. Okay, so if we're going to use WordPress, we need to understand a little bit about how it's built and how it works. So the two key things we need to understand are the database and the PHP files that make up the WordPress core and themes. These two systems interact to generate the front and back ends of WordPress. So let's have a look at the database first. Now while the database is a key part of WordPress, in practice you rarely need to see it. However, it is vital that you understand what it is and you take good care of it as it contains all your posts, pages and settings. For example, if you look at the post table, we can see the first two sample posts created by WordPress when we install it. The files that make WordPress work and the templates that make up themes are written in PHP. These files connect to the database, request, manipulate and present data. Now, the templating system in WordPress is based on logical functions that abstract much of the complexity of the system and make it easier to work with PHP and files. And here you can see how those two things interact. So the PHP grabs the data from the MySQL table and presents it according to the template with the title, the content and other elements of the site around it. So now let's move on to installing WordPress. So here we're going to show you how to install it to make sure your new install is secure, some of the ways to configure it to work the way you want. First part of this is to get the WordPress files. We download these from wordpress.org. So once you've downloaded it, the next step is usually to find somewhere to host it. In practice, this means choosing a host or setting up your own server. For us today, we're going to work on local development environment using something called XAMPP. This allows us to run our own server from a USB stick. So on the USB stick provided for the workshop today, you'll find XAMPP installed and a copy of WordPress. So the next thing we need to do is to extract all the WordPress files from the zip archive into the HT docs folder. This is the folder location where you need to put all files that you want to be accessible to the Apache server within XAMPP. And we want to extract them such that the final destination is HT docs folder. And that will build you a subfolder called WordPress. Now this bit may take a while, so if you don't have a cup of tea or coffee already, you might want to go and grab one now. OK, once that's done, we'll see all our files that we need for WordPress, including the very important WP config sample file. If we open this up in a text editor, we can see some of the settings needed for WordPress to talk to the database. Now as this is just a sample, it has default data in it, and we need to replace this with the actual names of our database and other account settings. But in order to do that, 
we first need to create a database. So let's open up the XAMPP control panel and start the two main things we need to run WordPress, which are the Apache server and the MySQL server. Once these are running, we can open up the XAMPP control panel and open up PHP MyAdmin. And this allows us to create and manipulate databases on XAMPP. So in this case, we're going to create a new database and call it WordPress. So next, we need to set up our WP config file to tell WordPress these details. So we go in and start editing. And we update the name of the database to WordPress. The MySQL database user is the root account. So that's just root. And we didn't set a password, which is very naughty, but we're on a local site, so we're OK. And now we need to save this config file, but removing the sample, because this is the real config file that WordPress will load. And now when we hit the install file at this URL, WordPress will prompt us for some information about our site, such as a title, uh, admin user for WordPress, and a password. And with that entered, we click install. And after a short wait, WordPress is ready. That's it. We're done. We can click login using the WordPress account we just created. That will take us to the dashboard for our WordPress site. And we are up and running. Uh, we can play around the dashboard, create some stuff, or we can go to the front end and see what it's done for us in terms of themes and sample content. OK, so we've got a site. However, before you go live with this, there's a few simple steps we need to take to secure your install. That's because WordPress is so widely used, it's become a big target to aim at. So what can we do to reduce the risks? Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is add a new user to our WordPress site. We'll fill in the basic form details, create a good password, and set this to be the administrator. So this has full privileges for your site. Now, we log out as our initial admin user and log back in as our new user. And at this point, we can change the permissions associated with the default admin account to be a subscriber. That means basically very few permissions. So even if someone gets access to your admin account on WordPress, there's very little they can do to your site. And that'll block a lot of automated attacks. Next thing is that many directories in WordPress are readable. And that's not a good security practice. So we can use an HD access file to control that. So by simple no indexes command, we can stop any browsing of our directories. There's other things we can do with HT access too. So for example, we can say here, deny access to our site at this point from anywhere. And this is the back end of the dashboard, so nobody can read that. Now why would we want to do that? Well, it's a case of block all and then enable selectively. So for example, put in an IP address. So that mean anybody from that IP address will be able to access the WordPress dashboard, but nobody else will. And there are a whole range of other options we can put in HD access uh, to prevent access to our config files, for example. If you don't like that approach, we can also use some plugins. So for example, Login Lockdown is a very nice but simple plugin that adds some extra options to say how many times can people fail at logging in before they're locked out, how long should they be locked out for. Or WP Security Scan is a very nice plugin which allows you to evaluate the security of your site and gives you prompts to work you through improving it. So as you can see here, we've got some green and some red, and the red's what we need to pay attention to. OK, so now we have a secure site that's fully functional and ready for our content. We'll look at that in the next step.